Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a really weird uh, knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the uh, Max Ace Raccoon Dog, which is not a weird knife in and of itself. It's really cool, front flipper, tanto. What's bizarre is the price tag. The price tag is ridiculously good. Um, I, uh, I've heard a rumor more than once that a lot of these uh, Chinese knife companies that are able to actually get their hands on CPM S90V, which is, this is real S90V and it is coming from Crucible, so it's coming from the United States, um, and they're even heat treating it pretty well. I've heard that it, it won't stay inexpensive. I've heard that they, they're having a problem with consistently grinding it and that it might not be something that they can always get. Now, this could be wrong. This could just be a rumor, right? I have no idea. But as of right now, this is an S90V blade with a really good price tag on it. I'm going to link this knife right down below so you guys can check it out if you want to. It does help my channel and use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks to Max Ace for sending this knife in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get through specs here real quick. Raccoon dog. Okay. Um, overall length is coming in at uh, it's about eight and eighth. It's definitely a full size knife. I mean, you could you could cheat it and say it's eight and a quarter. It's somewhere between there. Uh, blade length is three and a half on the dot. Cutting edge is also three and a half on the dot. Let's do some size comparisons up against the uh, where is it? Where are you? Ontario Rat Model One and the Ontario Rat Model Two. Uh, it's a big knife. Not quite as long as the Ontario Rat, but definitely thicker and definitely heavier because of the materials. Um, let's put it up against the Demco AD 20.5. There we go. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3. All righty. And last but not least, let's put it up against the uh, Benchmade Bugout. And finally, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. How's the action on this knife? Much is the same as other... Max Ace knives, it's good. I mean, it's it's a front flipper, right? But this is done correctly. The D10 is tuned correctly. The front flipper is, you know, I've realized that what I can't stand is when a knife is a front flipper and it's it's a really thin blade stock because it ends up being anywhere from annoying to painful to flip it. This is not the case. This is a fairly, it's not a thick blade stock, but it's thick enough and they've done the front flipper high enough that it's easy to get a hold of. The frame is wide enough and large enough that I don't feel like I'm going to accidentally throw it. So, would it be nice if it had a secondary means of deployment? Yes. Uh, does it work fine as a front flipper? Absolutely. Uh, lock bar access is also great, and the action itself is quite smooth. Uh, it's it's Max Ace. They generally do a really good job, and this is no exception. It feels just fine. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's a fairly thick knife. The titanium and the blade stock together make it a little bit thicker than, you know, what I consider the average to be, which is the Para 3 or PM2. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Not quite as long as the PM2, definitely longer than the Para 3, but not, no, you know, nowhere near as tall as either because it doesn't have a big hump in it. Materials, what are we looking at here? Titanium and CPM S90V. Take note though, there is also an M390 version of this knife floating around out there. There's also a version of it in, now this blows my mind even more. I think, unless I'm mistaken or just read it incorrectly, I think it's out of stock. I'm pretty sure I saw a version of this in Ultim and RWL34 for 35 bucks, which is freaking crazy. I, at that price, I think they're just like, you know, they, they got to be making money somewhere else to drop something like that. But the M390 versions of this are also really well priced. And this right here is what, you, what you're looking at is the most expensive version with the rock pattern. And it's not even 200 bucks. Uh, I'll tell you right now, like some of the S90V versions of this knife are $168. That is the least expensive full-size titanium and S90V knife I have ever heard of. Um, that's just wild, right? 
And again, they're getting the heat treat pretty good, right? I mean, a lot of people think that S90V is supposed to be in like the mid-60s. It, it is not. I'll remind people, S90V was not originally made for pocket knives. It was made for something else, industrial food prep or something like that. The optimal Rockwell hardness for its intended application is actually quite low, somewhere in the mid-50s. When we get into pocket knives, that's not ideal, so they crank it up a little bit. 59 to 61 is actually really good for S90V, considering at that range, it's substantially better in terms of edge, retard, uh, edge retention versus M390, and also still reasonably tough with excellent stain-resistant qualities. It is not super fun to sharpen if you are a novice, if you're a freaking level 100 sharpening wizard expert, which those guys always raise, raise their hands in the comment section, then they probably don't think it's quite as hard. But for the for the average person, uh, yeah, it's not super fun to sharpen. But wow, right? That's uh, that's freaking wild. I don't know. I just I, I'm not I'm not convinced we're gonna keep seeing knives like this at this price point. If we do, that's excellent, right? But I, I don't know how they're getting it done. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and weigh it because it is not a light knife. It's not a, it's not like the heaviest knife in the whole world, but it's, it's not a light knife. Uh, weight is coming in at, okay, not bad actually. I thought it was going to be like five and a quarter at least. 4.76 ounces. So not terrible. I feel like it's going to be a little butt heavy. Yeah, okay. It's not bad. It's right there where you're going to put your finger there. So, all right. For some reason, it feels heavier than that. I'm not sure why, but that's just what I'm getting. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. The pivot uh, is T8, which is what it usually is for Max Ace. And the body screws should also be T8. Yeah, they are. And then there's just one screw for the pocket clip. No mounting position for lefties. Sorry, lefties. Um, but at least, uh, you know, the hardware is, um, you know, the right size and is minimal. As long as you have the right tools and a place to put your hardware, you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness here real quick. Um, we are looking at 152. So it is, it is a fairly, a reasonably thick blade. Not horrendously thick, but reasonable. Uh, 150 thousandths or so. That's about ZT0562 thickness. Um, so not crazy, but also definitely not thin. Um, let's go ahead and uh, do the meat and potatoes here. So it kind of looks like a, it's just like a rock folding katana thing. That's kind of what it looks like. I actually like the rock pattern on this because it's kind of random. Uh, instead of just being a continuous pattern, it, it actually looks kind of like rocks, kind of, right? machined rocks. <laughs> uh, but it looks nice. There's also a smooth version of it. Um, those are the ones that cost a little bit less money. Uh, it's worth pointing out that these can absolutely, I mean, like sometimes I judge a flip, a front flipper in the detent by, you know, how easy it is to manipulate with fingers that are not intended to you. I mean, a, a well-tuned front flipper will, will manipulate like that. And this one does. And so I, it's very, very easy to manipulate. It's not, I mean, if you've never used a front flipper before, you don't want one of the ones that's kind of awkward, right? Uh, obviously, you don't want one that it just doesn't feel like a natural front flipper. This this feels like it was designed to be a front flipper. Like they, they decided that first and then designed everything else around it, right? So it works really, really well. Uh, Max Ace Fit and Finish is, as per usual, just absolutely impeccable. There's nothing here that looks like a flaw or an error. It's a good looking knife. I don't like that they put Max A so big on the pocket clip, but then again, I suppose, there's the S90V. I was going to say, I knew it somewhere. I suppose it's better than putting a whole bunch of stuff all over the blade, which they did not do from this side. And that looks really, really good. On this side, we have the designer logo and then hidden back here is the S90V. So I suppose I can take that, right? Uh, putting it on the, um, the pocket clip versus putting it on the blade, but it's still not my favorite thing in the whole world. Um, as far as ergonomics go, it's really like holding onto a long rocky rectangle that's been um, sort of smoothed up. There is a little bit of lock in here with this uh, you know, primary finger position, and there's a little bit of an area where you can choke up, but it's just flat with chamfered edges on the titanium. 
Um, so you do have to be cognizant of how close your finger is to the edge because you are definitely close. The jimping, they could have easily just extended it right out here to where the swedge starts, but they didn't. I don't know why this would have definitely been better with a little bit of jimping, but it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. The blade is really cool. What we have here is like a machine satin finish mixed with a blasted finish. And we, we do have a separation line here between the, um, the initial edge and the secondary edge. And what we usually see here is a distinct change, right? It's usually a tanto or, or a subtle tanto, right? But we actually have none of that. It's just a continuous curvature, which is cool because it makes it a lot easier to sharpen. You don't have to change angles, but we still get that really cool aesthetic there. Uh, you also get a very, very strong blade shape. I mean, we have all of the strength of a tanto with none of the headaches of having to resharpen it, which is pretty cool. The swedge looks good. Flat carries out quite a ways. You can see here we've got quite a, a bit of robustness, which is good because S90V is not a tough steel. Um, it's got, I think, about the same toughness as M390, but with better edge holding capabilities, which is really cool. The blade just looks really, really good. I like it. Um, it's cool. It's just kind of a folding tanto thing, which has been done many times, right? Uh, very Japanese aesthetic as, as far as I'm concerned. But that's, in fact, I think that this aesthetic has been beaten into the ground, right? That's Those are two things that go hand in hand, it seems like, in the, the cutlery, both in the, um, the, the cheap end of the cutlery world and the expensive end of the cutlery world and everything in between. This, this aesthetic has definitely been beaten into the ground, but it's still very popular, and I, I think it looks good. I like that they give you a little bit of extra access to the lock bar there. That's nice. They cut this a little bit lower on the front, and that's smart. Makes it really easy and comfortable to disengage. Uh, no lanyard thing, but who cares, right? Uh, this is a, an exposed frame lock. We've got the relief cut here, just the three little carvings instead of one continuous U-shape. Uh, this is a flat, milled, and knocked down pocket clip, a little bit of ramp underneath. Uh, in and out of the pocket, it's a breeze. Even with the rock texturing, I really don't notice any issues there. Um, so I don't I don't think the, the average person is really going to have a problem. We do have a lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop, which is par for the course, and it's nice to see. We have stops that are garaged or hidden underneath the frame and contact both sides of the titanium, which I always prefer over a single stop pin. Better uh, solidity, mitigating pre uh, sort of flex away from the pivot and into the frame, which helps a little bit if you're having to do a weird kind of twisty cut, right? But really, it's better for the action and the, you know, keeping the blade from being wobbly while maintaining, you know, good centering. Um, which is the case here, and that's really nice. We have no blade play up, down, left, or right. Uh, we have no, there's, well, it looked like there was a little bit of stick there, actually. Do we actually have lock stick? No, I think there's maybe a slight rub, but I wouldn't call that lock stick. We have no pivot lash. Uh, consistent in here, it sounds like it's, there's audible, like, shh, you know. I think that's just the detent ball kind of wearing its path. I think depending on the finish on the area around the pivot of the blade, the pivot hole, uh, you might have more or less audible noise. A drop of 10 weight nano oil might fix that. Either way, I think that that will go away over time, but the knife is extremely smooth. I, it wouldn't really bother me. It could also be that a small bit of debris is sitting there on the face of that area of the blade, or that there's debris caught between the detent ball and the face of the blade. But again, that's something that usually goes away over time. You can blow it out with compressed air, add some oil, etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, the detent, perfectly tuned for a front flipper with no detent lash. Yeah. Uh, this is a, you know, a, a design that aesthetically looks good. I mean, if you like this aesthetic, but it, it, it's appealing to a wide range of people. It's a, it's on the bigger side. It's on the heavier side, but not anything crazy, right? Um, but it, it will appeal to a wide range of people. Um, and, you know, the edge isn't ground to be ultra thin. I, I feel like that's obvious, but I can demonstrate here with a piece of paper. It, it will slice, absolutely. But, I'll give you a few examples. It's going to lift the edge. You can see there, it's kind of lifting the edges of the cuts. It's not an, in, an insanely clean slice, right? It's good enough. Uh, it'll, it'll process cardboard and stuff like that, which you're going to cut on a daily basis, but it's not going to slice with 
you know, surgical precision. You can still get the curly cues and things like that, but if you need a really, really thin blade, that's not going to be it. Uh, it'll, it'll be, it's a durable geometry though. Um, the, the main thing here is the price tag. The price is ridiculous. It's insane that you can get a full tie, full size knife, even if it's made in China, right? A lot of people zero in on that. Ha, huh, you haven't been paying attention. If that's the first thing that comes in your brain, you haven't been paying attention to the knife world in the last 10 years. You haven't been paying attention at all. You haven't been paying attention in the last two years. That is an absurdly good price tag for S90V and titanium, even considering the thing is made in China, uh, but with the precision of Maxace, which is very, very good. They are one of the best out there when it comes to precision machining. Um, this is incredible. I, I hope that the rumor about S90V is wrong. I hope that we continue to see this stuff coming in at, you know, the nearly the $150 territory. That's ridiculous. If you'd have told me, if you'd have told me five years ago, like, hey, listen, in 2023, they'll be nice for 168 bucks that are S90V and titanium. I'd be like, you get the hell out of here right now, huh? You get out of here, crazy guy. You don't know what you're talking about. No way. Ah, with all the inflation and everything like that, it's absolutely, it's, it's even more incredible, right? Anybody who's not impressed by this is aggressively trying to not be impressed, right? This, this is really, really good. The, the price tag is so good on this thing. Uh, I, I just can't believe it. I don't know what the deal was with the Ultim and RWL34 version, right? If you, if, if at some point, let's say you're watching this video and you're like, oh, only the M390 versions are left. If you can get it for under 200, it's, it's a great deal. This this exact same thing made by so many other companies would be 250, 275, maybe even $300. Max Ace is definitely building things that cost a lot more money, but when they go simple, they put a good price tag on it and they're still doing that. That's great because they're definitely a lot more popular now than they were 2 years ago. So, yeah. Uh, it's a recommendable knife. It's going to be a little bit too big for some people, right? Uh, and some people aren't going to like front flippers, but that price tag, I just, you can't, you can't ignore that. It's too good. So cool. Glad to see companies out there still making really awesome stuff like this with amazing materials. I am more than happy to let S90V take the crown that M390 has worn for so long. I'm tired of it. There's nothing wrong with M390. I'm just tired of it, right? Boo. You know, <laughs> get new material. What's that mean? Yeah, S90V is not a new steel, but my goodness. I mean, in the same territory as M390 or less than a lot of what production, even Chinese M390 is, it's not Chinese. It's all coming from Bowler, right? But it's beating it out in that territory. That's amazing. Usually, what, we, what we've come to expect is you can get it in S90V, but you're going to pay 50 to 70 more, right? So at least that's how it works with American knives. Holy moly. Anyways, very, very cool. The raccoon dog, which, why? Why is it called the raccoon dog, right? I'm sure a raccoon dog is a real thing. How does it apply to this? I swear they just have Rolodexes. They just spin it. It's just like nouns, right? And they're like, let's spin two. And they got raccoon and dog. And they're like, all right. <laughs> That's going to be pretty much it today. Like I said, this will be linked right down below. Please. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.